Happy Thursday, everyone. Joe here of Sports Grid. It's time for Puck It with Joe. We have a loaded slate today, 12 games, so we're kicking off a little bit early. Already seeing your comments come in. Happy Thursday, Matt. Let's make some freaking money out there on the ice tonight. Now, last night was a pretty solid night. If you were able to follow on game time decisions, all of those bets did go 5-1 and one yesterday for the official bets. We weren't able to get Tyler Trafoli for any points with um, the Winnipeg Jets, it's surprising to not see him really connecting out there on the ice. So we'll keep circling him because I do think he's in for a big night one of these days. But let's get to today's slate. One thing to note, Noah Hanavan is coming back to Calgary tonight. So we're going to have a play on him, actually. There's a couple other angles we're going to look at here, but the first game kicking off at 7 p.m. Eastern we're going to talk about is the New York Islanders. Now, all these odds are over on FanDuel, so the Islanders and the Buffalo Sabres. So this is a pick in between the two, minus 110 to both of these teams. That total's sitting at 5.5. This is a really interesting 5.5 because as of late, both of these teams have been strong offensively. But I'm looking at the goaltending matchup here, and we've got Sorokin versus Lankiken, and I do think this stays under that total. Now, that total of 5.5 to the over, if you want to take it that way, which I completely understand when we look at the goals that have been put up by these teams as of late. The over is minus 130, so you're going to have to lay the juice, but the under is plus 106, and I just look at it here. Sorokin, he's not as good on the road as he is at home, but he's still got a 2.99 goals against average on the season and a 910 save percentage and Lankinkin has been absolutely hot. I have I can't remember the last game we saw him let off three or four goals. The New York Islanders, we know the defense is locking down just a little bit more under Patrick Watt. I know they've been stepping up on the offensive side, but I do think 3-2 style game at the highest with I lean on the Islanders. But it is hard to come in here and be able to get the win. They're off that shutout loss versus the Kings on Monday. That was a 3-0 to zero loss. But they won their six-game prior. So this team was playing so phenomenally strong. They know they have to lock down on defense after what the Kings did to them in that last game. They can't allow it to happen again. And the Sabres off two big wins. Um, they've won their last two. They got the win over the Red Wings in a 7-3 to three game. And they had a shootout win over Edmonton. I expect the same style of play out of the Buffalo Sabres here that we did see versus Edmonton as I do expect both of these teams to lock down so give me the under five and a half I know it's a little scary at plus 106 but I do think it is the right way to go in this situation um you've got to look at the Sabres and they haven't reached the postseason since 2011 it's been forever since they reached the postseason it's the longest time in NHL history for any team they're sitting five points out of um, the second wild card spot in um, entering entering into today, if I can get my words out of my mouth. So this team is trying so hard to be able to pick up this win. Five points, you know, they do have the time to be able to make it up. And the Islanders are trying to hold on to that second wild card spot in the Eastern Conference. So both of these teams battling it out. We have the Buffalo Sabres sitting six in the Atlantic and the Islanders sitting fourth in the Metro. Now, when we look at how these teams played in the past, we did see in October, the Buffalo Sabres win it in a three to one game. So it was a low scoring game there. And the New York Islanders won the week prior at home three to two. So both of the games, both of the matchups this season have stayed under that total. And again, I know we've seen a lot of goals, especially out of the Buffalo Sabres as of late, putting up seven on the Red Wings and allowing three. You would look to this game to go over because we do see these teams be able to score the goals, but I'm just not buying into it. I really do think this one stays under. Let's look at the next game, and this is a hard under for me. The Florida Panthers taking on the Carolina Hurricanes. Now, odds over on FanDuel, we have the Florida Panthers up plus 112. We rode with them the other night. We're able to get the win in that crazy comeback win over the Dallas Stars. Who would have expected that? That bet looked dead in the water for the Florida Panthers on the money line. Unfortunately, because they were able to come back and win, we weren't able to hit the under, but we did hit the under in the first period, so it was a positive in that game. The Florida Panthers at plus 112, minus 134 here for the Carolina Hurricanes. This price has gone up during the day. They were minus 120 earlier. Total of five and a half. Minus 105 to the under, minus 115 to the under. Because I could foresee a crazy third period, 
I'm going to look at the first period again. I think that's what we isolate in matchups like this. Now, that first period, no goals in the first 10 minutes. You guys know I'm going to sweat it out completely in this one. That's coming in at plus 108. I love it. The under one and a half in the first period at minus 116. Bovarovsky expected in goal tonight for the Florida Panthers and Frederick Anderson expected here for the Carolina Hurricanes. My issue with the under is, well, the defense should give the support to Frederick Anderson. Will Frederick Anderson be able to withstand the Florida Panthers coming at him in this one? I do think Florida at the price I'm getting I can't not put my money on them. They have the best road record in the whole NHL. That road record sitting 24, 8, and 2. I can't go against them with plus money. Now, the last time these teams did match up uh, was February 22nd. The Carolina Hurricanes were able to get one. It was a one to nothing win. That one goal came in the third period. So if we're seeing these defenses play really tight in that first period, before that first period's over, I'm going to live bet the under one and a half in the second period, because I do think we could see a very similar situation where these teams roll into that third period before anyone scores. I expect both of these teams to come out so strong defensively. And you look at the kills on both sides, the Carolina Hurricanes, very strong kill here at 85.2%. They're allowing an average of only 25.4 shots on goal. Florida Panthers that kills 81.8 and 27.7 shots. We know they lock down on the defensive side of things. Now, Jake Gunsl Gunstill here will be making his second start for the Carolina Hurricanes. He's really interesting to look at because Gunsel was from the Pittsburgh Penguins. Now, he, in that game versus the Rangers, got really locked down. He only found one shot on net in that game. Tonight, his shots on goal prop is sky high. It's four plus shots on goal, which leads me to believe the books are really thinking um, and they're covering themselves. They're thinking he's going to have a big night. So Jake Gunsel here for four plus shots on goals, plus 132. His anytime goals at plus 185 and the assist is at plus 118. When we look at him versus the Florida Panthers in his career, he has seven goals, 10 assists in 17 games. So he's normally getting on the points. Um, I can't find him for a point tonight. If your book will give you the point for Jake Gunsel, I would look at it here, even though I do think this is a low scoring game. Could he get on the scoreboard? He might. Could he get four plus shots on goal? It's asking a lot here versus the Florida Panthers because the Florida Panthers only allowing an average of 27.7. So I'm not willing to take it, but if you guys want to take it, I, I'm not opposed to it at all. Okay, let's look at the next one here. Oh, and you know what? Before I forget to mention, um, Byram for the uh, Sabres. Shots on goal tonight are not listed on FanTool. His anytime goal is coming in at plus 600. Now, he's a defenseman for the Sabres. He was um, traded March 6th from the Colorado Avalanche. He scored two uh, goals in the third period in their last game. So at plus 600, for him to continue rolling in that one, it's an under game. So, But I think if you can find his shots on goal, it would be it would be good to take him for two plus. He's a defenseman, so I don't think you're going to have to lay juice on two plus. So just something to watch. Happy Thursday, guys! I'm happy to see everyone coming here today. So Larry, happy Thursday! It's a beautiful day. It is a beautiful day to make some freaking money. Let's get those over. Jake Scott. Gunsel's going to score a million goals. He's going to be absolutely phenomenal for them. Let's just see if he will be able to score the goal tonight um, with them. Okay, so you've got him at minus 165 for the over half. Yeah, it's a fantastic card. If you can take him for um, two plus shots and get that plus money, I think you definitely can count on him to get two plus shots in that one. Now, let's look at the Ottawa Senators versus the Columbus Blue Jackets. I, I'm struggling with why the Senators are the favorite in this one. So let me bring up odds minus 132 for the Ottawa Senators. Now, listening to media and press releases out of um, Senators media, my dog is going to bark. He's going to be obnoxious here for a second. Hang on just one sec. I'm going to mute myself.
apologies for that. A little kid went running past on my grass and he did not appreciate that. So that's why he's locked out now. Um, looking at the Ottawa Senators, minus 132. The Columbus Blue Jackets at plus 110. And we got a total of six and a half, minus 124 to the over, plus 110 to the under. If you're willing to take this one under, I can't get there with the under. I am going to look at this one to go over. Now, looking at these teams, we know the struggles out of both of them. The Ottawa Senators come in here sitting eighth in the Atlantic. The Columbus Blue Jackets sitting eighth in the Metro. Elvis will be in goal for Columbus tonight and Forsberg here for the Senators. Both of these teams kind of playing for a little bit of pride right now. We did see the Ottawa Senators in the win versus the Pittsburgh Penguins versus the Pittsburgh Penguins in a game that I really felt like no one wanted to record the win. There are players still missing from this team, but when you look at players like Brady Kachuk and Jake Sanderson, you listen to what they've been saying to the media. These players, the players that are out there on the ice are playing for pride. You hear Brady Kachuk talking about playing for pride for the amazing city he plays for and giving it their best. And Jake Duck, um, Jake Sanderson, sorry, saying that he is playing for the fans and everything that they do to support them. So I do think this has to be a higher scoring game. I think both of these teams will be able to score on each other. You look here at the Columbus Blue Jackets. They've lost their last two. They got shut out versus Montreal. That really frustrates a team, and it makes a team come back in the next one and be able to find the back of the net. And neither goaltender I can really have a lot of faith in. Forsberg with a two point or sorry, 3.29 goals against average and an 8.88 save percentage. Elvis coming in here with a 3.29 and a 9.01. So three of the last four games have gone over that total of six and a half. I think the books have it right with the juice going to the over. I wish we were getting plus money, but I do think this one goes over. And I can't get behind the Sens at minus 134, but with the pride and all of their statements, do I really want to play on the Columbus Blue Jackets here when I really haven't seen that. We do have a couple of players out for the Columbus Blue Jackets as well with injury. So, or sorry, with illness. So I'm not willing to touch it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the over six and a half. I think that's a strong way to go. I'm going to look at a couple of goal scorers. Now, Jake Sanderson, he did score that last um, goal in that game to be able to get the Sens the win. So right now he's plus 600 for the anytime goal. He's an offensive defenseman. I think there's a possibility, but it's a pretty big leap for him to get that anytime goal. I would look at Brady Kachuk at plus 115. The captain really needs to lead the team here. And uh, Batherson, Batherson at plus 220. I think for the Ottawa Senators, two players to really look at. If you're looking at the Columbus Blue Jackets, you know Johnny Hockey loves to show up. Um, at times, he's plus 270 for the anytime goal, but I do trust more in Jenner at plus 160. Let's look at the next game here. The Arizona Coyotes taking on the Detroit Red Wings. Now, the Coyotes are sitting at plus 126. The Red Wings at minus 152, total of six and a half. The six and a half is juiced to that over at minus 118. The under is coming in at plus 104. Or sorry, yeah, or minus 104 for the under. You look at the goaltending, Connor Ingram here versus Alex Leon for the Detroit Red Wings. He's been up and down. He's played some really strong games. When I look at this game, I do expect us to see the goals, especially out of the Red Wings. The Red Wings have lost their last six and the last game to the Sabres on the road, they allowed them to completely destroy them. Sabres won that seven to three. Looking at the Arizona Coyotes, they've lost their last two Tuesday on the road to the Minnesota Wild, four to one. They weren't able to find the back of the net. Now, looking at previous matchups between these two, the Arizona Coyotes won on March 4th, or sorry, not March 4th. They won in March, four to nothing um, in Arizona. And they also won the game prior. They got a shootout win, four to three in Arizona as well. Now, they've won six of the last seven meetings, but the Red Wings won the last game on their home ice. There is an absolute do-or-die kind of mentality here for the Red Wings. They need to get back in the win column. This is a team that I did have a lot of faith in being able to make the playoffs. Looking at them here, I expect those goals to come for them, and I expect those goals to come fast. And listening to what their coach is saying, their head coach knows 
this is a game they have to come out so strong in that first period because we saw them in that last game out versus the Sabres. They went down in the first period and they never were able to make that comeback. Looking at the Red Wings first period puck line, minus a half a goal is coming in at plus 142. This team is running out of time to make a push for the playoffs. I think we see the best of them in the first period. Now, this is our first game home off a four a four game road trip, normally a fade situation, but they lost every single one of those games on the road. Like I said, they've lost their last six. So I'm not buying into a bad game here. I think we get the best first period puck line laying a half a goal plus 142 and the Red Wings team total over three and a half at minus 110. Now I do think because both of these teams issues have been defense and goaltending out of both of them. The goal in the first five minutes. It's going to be a fast five minutes. I want the goal in the first five minutes. I think it comes, and I think it comes fast. Now, we know it could come by the Arizona Coyotes here. Then we need the Red Wings to score two goals. So it's kind of, it's going to be a hard one to be able to get. I'm hoping it comes by the Red Wings in the first five minutes so that we can cover that puck line with ease. But I do think we could get that goal in the first five minutes. It's plus 160. So it's a quarter bet here. I think it has every possibility of cashing. We know the Red Wings have given up those early goals quick to opponents. And there's goal scores on the Arizona Coyotes. It has every ability. Um, I was looking at their team total over two and a half for the Coyotes. It's so highly juiced at minus 176. If you're looking for goal scorers, though, the Arizona Coyotes are coming in at plus 160 with Clayton Keller. I do like Kim Patrick Kane at plus 150 for the Red Wings and Alex Dabrinka at plus 160. So those are my goal scorers. Let's look at the Boston Bruins and the Montreal Canadiens. I know a lot of people are asking what's wrong with the Boston Bruins after they lost that last game to the St. Louis Blues. 5-1, to one, I believe, was the final score, and the Bruins were on their home ice. I think the Bruins are afraid to go into the postseason as they did last year and then lose in the first round. I do think they believe in the curse now after losing last year. So Boston slowed down a little bit, and I do think they're going to win some crucial games here. I do think they would prefer to be first in their division. Um, but yeah, they've slowed down a little. So they're minus 220 versus the Montreal Canadiens. Montreal at plus 180. Plus one and a half for the Montreal Canadiens is minus 140. Now this has gone up during the day. It was minus 135 earlier. Minus one and a half on the Boston Bruins is plus 116. That total is at five and a half at minus 128 to the over and minus 104 to the under. When you first look at this matchup, it looks like such a strong game for the Boston Bruins to bounce back off that game to the St. Louis Blues, but I don't love the price. Taking a side here, for me, it is the puck line here, plus one and a half for the Montreal Canadiens at minus, well, now it's minus 140. It was actually minus 130 earlier in the day, not minus 135. They've covered the puck line in their last six games at home. But I do think this all comes down to Sam Montague. Looking at Sam Montague in net for the Montreal Canadiens, ever since Jake Allen got traded away, we've seen him out and he's been playing stronger. And I do expect a lot more out of him. We saw what a fantastic game Kumwa had in the last game recording the shutout. And I do think these two goaltenders are happy with the move. They weren't traded. They were kept. Jake Allen was let go. Sam Montebu for his safe shots on goal today. The number is high, 27 and a half. I'm going to take it to the over at minus 125. If Montreal has any hope of holding on in this game, Sam Montebu has to stand on his head. When we look at the Bruins, though, they have dominated. They've won nine of the last 10 meetings versus a Montreal. So it is a scary spot to be. I would completely understand if you pass on this game. I took um, half a unit on Sam Montebu over the 27 and a half and the other half on Montreal on that puck line plus one and a half at minus 130 when I got it earlier in the day. But this is a battle of the Atlantic. The Montreal Canadiens would love nothing more than to give the Boston Bruins two losses in a row here if they lost today. Um, so I could see it. I could see them getting their best. And the difference between these two teams, and the more I talk about it, the more I just want to go take Montreal on the money line because I'm thinking about it more. 
you look at the Boston Bruins. They've been playing with a lack of emotion out there. What is Montreal at home? Montreal, the crowd is going to be in um, the arena. Everyone is going to be so pumped for this game. I think Montreal brings the emotion. So I could see them getting the win, you guys. Yeah, Premier was last game. Montreal kind of sucked. Montreal, so Montreal, he, ha he hasn't been as good as I would have thought. Um, he was in net, though, early November when when they last matched up. So when we look at this, these two teams have split on the season. The Boston Bruins won in January 9 to 4 at home and in November, sorry, 5 to 2. So the Boston Bruins have won those two and then earlier in November, the first matchup of the season, we did see Montreal get the win 3 to 2. Now Sam Montebu was a net for that one. He saved 26 to 28 shots on goal, so that 27 and a half is such a like dead on number, but I do think he goes over that one. Let's look at the San Jose Sharks. The San Jose Sharks and the Pittsburgh Penguins here. Okay, enough is enough. I'm going to say it. Sid, get your head on and let's play some freaking hockey. And I do think that's what we're going to get out of Sidney Crosby today. He's made a statement. They've come out, they've lost their last four in that game versus the Sens. It was like no one wanted to score a goal. No one wanted to get the win. The Senators ended up getting it. It's just the frustration for the fans here of Pittsburgh. But I understand the frustration for Sidney Crosby and the core is right there. Now, they're a huge favorite, and I know this team looks like it's given up. I think it was a statement. Minus 320 here for the Pittsburgh Penguins, plus 225 for the San Jose Sharks. Total is six and a half, minus 130 to the under, and plus 106 to the over. And I understand why you're getting plus money to the over. The San Jose Sharks haven't been that strong. But I also really like Sharona. Sharona I think you say Sharona, um, Magnus, the goaltender in for the San Jose Sharks. I really do like what we've seen out of him. He made 41 saves in the game versus the Flyers, only allowing three goals. He also only allowed one goal versus uh, the Senators, but wipe out that game because the Senators, <laughs> no one wanted to win. Tristan Jari saved 39 shots versus the Senators again, uh, not a team that was looking to win. And he saved 42 versus Edmonton and allowed those forwards. So he still flew over his props in that one. Looking at this one, if the Pittsburgh Penguins can get the win, it all relies on Sidney Crosby. Sidney Crosby has to come out with the mindset that enough is enough. Let's play hockey. Let's get the win. And I do think we see that out of him. Four games, right? They've lost their last four and seven of their last 10. It's not like the Pittsburgh Penguins not to make the playoffs. Yeah, this will be if they don't make the playoffs, this, which we know they're not making the playoffs at this rate. Second straight year um, of not making the playoffs after making them for, what, 16 years straight. So the frustration is there. The frustration is there by this core. This will be the fifth straight season that the San Jose Sharks do not make the playoffs. And if you don't remember 2016, these two teams were in the Stanley Cup with the Penguins getting the win. So I don't know. I expect a lot out of Sid the Kid. That's where all my bets are going in this one. Give me Sidney Crosby for the anytime goal at plus 130. Give me Sidney Crosby for a sprinkle on two plus goals at plus 900. And his points for two plus points at plus 162. He he has to show up. He absolutely has to show up. Now, if you're looking at other bets that I'm looking at here, I do like the Sharks team total over two and a half at plus 122. I do expect those goals to come in this game. The first period over one and a half at minus 128. But for all of this to happen, for everything to happen, well, except for the Sharks team total over two and a half. And I think that's probably the safest because. If the Penguins want to make another statement game, the Sharks will score four in this one. So their team total over two and a half. Either way, I don't expect a lot of defense in this game. I expect the scoring to come from the Pittsburgh Penguins. And it's all Sid. So I think all of these bets have every opportunity of hitting. Let's look at the next game here, you guys. We've got the New York Rangers. I want to thank all of you for being here. I see all of those viewers online with me appreciate each and every one of you if you can hit the like hit the retweet i would extremely appreciate it remember i'm on game time decisions in an hour 
640 Eastern with Kevin Walsh. So we're going to be breaking down my favorite bets in some of these games. Let's look at the New York Rangers taking on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Now the Rangers are on a roll. That fantastic win over Carolina, one to nothing on the road. This is a dead straight pick them. Minus 110 to either side here. We have a total of six and a half minus 132 to the under plus 108 to the over. Ego Sisterkin is confirmed in net for the New York Rangers. And I love what we've seen out of this Rangers team. Igor has been playing absolutely hot and he said he got that last win versus Carolina for his mom which I love as a mother. Andre Vasilevsky in here for the Tampa Bay Lightning. He's got a 2.96 goals against average and an 8.96 save percentage. Now, my concern here with New York Rangers is this is their third game in four nights and their fourth game in six. You've got to think. Defense and goaltending has to be tired. Igor sisterkin has been playing absolutely lights out. Can this last against the Tampa Bay Lightning? The Tampa Bay Lightning have been phenomenally strong offensively. This team has the best power play in the league. If the Rangers make those mistakes and get in the penalty box, well, Rempe is actually, he's suspended for his dirty play versus the Devils. But we know other players here can spend time in that penalty box. So if they do, the fear here is the Lightning will be able to convert on that power play. Best power play in the league at 29.3%. That being said, the kill is still strong here for the Rangers. We know this team wants to lock down and win low-scoring games. But like I said, I'm afraid defense and goaltending are getting tired in this one. They have the Pens on deck on Saturday and their home Sunday versus the New York Islanders. The Tampa Bay Lightning are also coming in here off of rest. They got the win on Saturday versus the Flyers. It's Thursday. They haven't played. They've had three days off, which we know is an advantage to this team. Older team here getting that rest. I'm going to look at that first period to be a goal fest. I'm going to look at the first period over one and a half at minus 122. I know it's the Rangers. I know the Rangers sitting first in the Metro here. They're facing the fourth team in the Atlantic in their third game in four nights. I just can't think that this first period isn't going to be explosive with what the Tampa Bay Lightning can bring. So first period over one and a half. I'm going to look at Braden Point here of the Tampa Bay Lightning to have a big day. Now he's been getting those shots on goal. The three plus shots on goal coming in at minus 138. So it's juicy. I do expect one of those goals to connect as we get a tired Igor Sisterkin out there. That anytime goal at plus 160. He's had a goal in three of his last four games. I do expect him to get on the scoreboard tonight. So we also look at the Lightning road trip on deck, and this is a heck of a road trip. They have the Panthers on Saturday, Vegas on Tuesday, Thursday the Sharks, Saturday the Kings, and Sunday the Ducks. So they've got a hard schedule ahead of them. They absolutely need to come off this rest and get this win tonight. Now, goal scorers, otherwise, you know Panarin of the Rangers is absolutely phenomenal. Chris Kreider as well. I would look at both of them for the anytime goal. Kucherov as well for the Lightning and Stamkos for the Lightning. But I do think it's Braden Point that I have to um, hit on for sure. Yeah, Shesterkin and uh, Vasilovsky. Shesterkin loves to go up against Vas and get those points. Jimmy, I know it should be the Rangers and the under. I absolutely hear you on the Rangers and the under. That is the logical way to look at this one. I just can't see it playing out that way. I think the Rangers are getting tired. If this one is a low-scoring battle, then it's going to be the one versus the Pens that goes over that total because then they have the Islanders on Sunday. I expect this one to be a lower scoring and then, um, or a higher scoring, sorry, and then for the game versus the Penguins, their defense to be alive versus the Penguins and the Islanders. So. That's where I'm going. Let's win with Vegas to score first and the Devils to tie plus 2,500. Wow, I love that one. I could absolutely see Dallas scoring first in that matchup. We'll talk about that game in just a second. Girona, 4.75 goals against average. Yeah, he does. But you look at Magnus there and he has had some phenomenal games. And I really like the young rookie out there. Okay. Tampa is missing. Tampa still has a possibility, but they're just on that bubble. Okay, 
The next game, we have the Toronto Maple Leafs taking on the Philadelphia Flyers. Toronto coming in at minus 120 and plus 100 for the Flyers. Feels like Toronto hasn't played forever, which is kind of crazy to think they have. It just feels like forever for me. I don't know why. Total six and a half, juice to that under at minus 124, plus 102 to the over. I was actually shocked that this one was juice to the under. Um, Samsonov in goal for the Toronto Maple Leafs and Urshan here for the Philadelphia Flyers. Now, I know the Flyers have been involved in some low-scoring games, and Toronto has as well, but I look at the offensive firepower of the Toronto Maple Leafs. They're off that win versus Montreal um, on Saturday, so it has been quite a while since we saw them play. It was a 3-2 to two game um, in that win. That was the first time they'd won in Montreal, though, for like ever. So I understand there are offensive struggles in that game, but I don't think they're going to have those offensive struggles versus the Philadelphia Flyers. Now, the Flyers have that strong kill at 84.8% of the time, and the power play strong here for Toronto at 27.2. So they kind of cancel each other out, but their ability to score five on five for the Toronto Maple Leafs on Urgent, I think really is there. He got lit up to start that last game versus the Tampa Bay Lightning. He allowed four goals on 15 shots on net. Then in his next game versus the Sharks, he made 27 saves. So he got pulled in that game. He got rattled. Can he get back on track? Well, he did get back on track, but can he withstand the Toronto Maple Leafs offensively who are averaging 32.7 shots on goal per game, 3.53 goals per game? I don't think so. So I'm going to look at Toronto's team total. Give me Toronto's team total over three and a half at plus 124. They've gone over this number of three and a half in their last six versus the Flyers. And there's no reason for me to think they can't do it again, especially when you look at the Philadelphia Flyers. Their head coach is suspended right now. Brad Shaw is standing in. Now, they did get the win without their head coach in their last game. But to get two wins in a row here, I'm just not buying into the Flyers, especially against the Toronto Maple Leafs. I'm going to look at um, Austin Matthews, William Nylander, John Tavares, all the regular guys to be able to to get those goals tonight. I think they all have a possibility of finding the back of Urson's net. Mitch Marner is out with a lower body injury. Um, so that's to note. Nick Robinson here. I cannot find him for the anytime goal. Now, Nick Robinson was brought back up from the AHL. He's played what? Six, seven, eight, nine. He's played a bunch of games with the Leafs, but he keeps getting... No, he's played 41 games. I don't know what I'm talking about. He's played a million games. I'm thinking his goals. He's had eight goals um, this season with the Leafs, 11 assists, 41 games. So he's been, he got sent down, brought back up. He's been very vocal about his dislike for him going up and down as well as his lack of play time. So if you can find him for, the points tonight or the anytime goal, that's Nick Robertson. I would look at him tonight. I think he has to back up where his mouth is going because there's so much talk about his statements to the press. But I can't find it. I can't find it on any of my books, which is really odd. It's like the books know he's going to have a big one. Um, Yeah, the over seems safe. Eight minutes. And I, I know he only plays... Very, very little. And that's why the books aren't giving us any as well. Three in a row winners. Marner injured. Yeah, Mitch Marner is out. Hit that like. I would appreciate it. So thank you so much. Yeah, I looked on DK as well. I can't find anything for him either. Let's look at the New Jersey Devils taking on the Dallas Stars. We'll get moving here, you guys. So many games on the board. The New Jersey Devils at plus 158. The Dallas Stars at minus 192. Total of six and a half, minus 118 to that over, minus 104 to the under. When I first looked at this game, my first thought was, oh dear God, not Jake Allen. <laughs> because Jake Allen is a net for the New Jersey Devils. You guys know my lack of love for him this season with the Montreal Canadiens. And I just, I didn't understand why. The New Jersey Devils picked him up, okay? I still don't understand it, but when I look at Jake Allen's record versus the Dallas Stars, 
it's led me to believe he is in for a Stella night. His first performance for the New Jersey Devils, yes, be it on the road, not in New Jersey. Does he make a statement here? Does he play with his heart? I think he could. So, well, I said, oh, dear God, not Jake Allen. Oh, dear God, here we go. I'm betting on Jake Allen. And if I lose this bet, well, you guys can all sit here tomorrow and say, oh, dear God, let's not do it again. I'm taking him over 27 and a half save shots on goal. That's coming in at minus 125. The books even know it. Minus 125 on a Jake Allen prop to the over hasn't been a thing all season the books are covering themselves, making us lay that juice. And I do think he's in for a good one. He's 11-7-1 in 20 games versus the Dallas Stars in his career. Be it he didn't have the support of the defense here of the New Jersey Devils, but he also had the support of, you know, the Montreal Canadiens and a bunch of those as well. Um, he's got a 2.41 goals against average versus them and a save percentage of 9-1-3. So we are going there. Just to put it into perspective, I looked at Jake Ottinger. So it's the battle of the Jakes. We got Jake Allen, Jake Ottinger. Jake Ottinger is uh he has a 2.98 goals against average at 899 save percentage. He has safe shot on goal prop tonight. It's 25 and a half. And you're minus 110 to the over. You look at the New Jersey Devils, they average 31.9 shots on goal. The Dallas Stars allow 29.5. That doesn't make sense why his number is so low. And then Jake Allen, you look at the defense of the Devils, they're allowing 29.5 shots. So they both allow the same shots. The Stars are averaging 31.3. The books are covering themselves. I'm going to go big on Jake Allen tonight. I can't believe I'm saying this. I feel sick even thinking about it. But Jake Allen making his debut. Let's go big. And I'm a Calgary Flames fan, so we'll talk about the Flames in a minute. Dallas to score first and the Devils to tie at plus 2,500. Long shot, but absolutely a fantastic bet. I love where you're going with this bet. You could see Jake Allen allow that quick, easy one in. We know he's now with a team where he doesn't know what his defense is going to do as much out there. They could get in his way, not know his uh, preferences for a lot of things. So I love where you're going with this one. We know the Devils are strong offensively. The Stars, I think, I don't know. I just don't trust this tonight. I think the Devils probably pull off the upset. The over two and a half for the New Jersey Devils coming in at minus 138. Then Jake Allen, safe shots on goal over 27 and a half. They, the Devils won the last two meetings in Dallas. So that's something to say. The uh, Stars did win in January 6 to 2. It's going to be an interesting one here. That is for sure. Uh, the last time these teams matched up, though, Rupe Hintz was able to score twice. So his anytime goal for the Stars is a plus 180. Jason Robinson, you could look at our Wyatt Johnson. Wyatt Johnson's plus 230, so I'd like the value on him. For the Devils, Jack Hughes, plus 125. Nico Heischer, plus 180. Luke Hughes, when was the last time we saw Luke Hughes come out and get that big goal? Could Luke Hughes get a big goal on Jake Ottinger? If you think so, it's plus 750. You guys know that plus money had me. I do think this game screams 4-3. So over that total, again, the over in this one is minus 118. The Devils team total over two and a half. It's it's a 4-3 game. Coin flip game has every opportunity of going to overtime. I love that bet that you guys have there of overtime. This one, just singly, if you don't uh, parlay it like you did, plus 380 to go to overtime. And I think it has every possibility. I think there's something about the Devils and Jake um, Allen tonight, not Ottinger. 25 and a half. I still can't believe the books have Jake Ottinger at 25 and a half. It tells me they're losing. It really does. Something is weird with this game. I look at the schedule, though. You know, the, the Dallas Stars are off that loss to um, the Florida Panthers. Florida Panthers got the comeback win. They have the Kings on deck on Saturday at home. It should be a nice spot for them to bounce back. I just, I can't buy into it. I think the best bet is the Devils team total and Jake Ottinger over on his saves. 
Let's look at the Anaheim Ducks taking on the Minnesota Wild. Now, the Ducks aren't a team I trust in a lot. The book's not trusting on them either. They're minus 230 here on or plus 230 here on the money line. The Minnesota Wild are coming in at plus 285, and that total sitting at six and a half at minus 122 to the under and plus 100 to the over. Now, if you want to look at the puck line here, the puck line for the Anaheim Ducks plus one and a half is minus 106. And laying the one and a half for the Minnesota Wild is minus 113. Dostal will be in goal for the Anaheim Ducks. And we're seeing Marc-Andre Fleury in net for the Minnesota Wild. Now, Marc-Andre Fleury versus the Minnesota Wild has been absolutely fantastic in his career. My play on the Ducks today is their team total under two and a half. Now it's juicy at minus 145. But this is where I'd go if you want to bet in this game. This isn't my favorite game on the board. I do think the Minnesota Wild probably should win this by uh, two goals, cover that puck line. But they have a road trip on deck, three-game road trip on deck, and um, they face Anaheim again on the second game, which is on Tuesday. Then they have the Kings on that second night of a back-to-back. -back. Um, so I think... In their next game will be the look ahead where the Ducks could possibly pull off the win back on their home ice. This win should be um, them all day. It's going to come down to what Dostal does in goal for Anaheim in this one. I really do think if the Wild cover that puck line or not, because I could see it being, you know, a 2 nothing low scoring game in this one. So I don't love the puck line, but I would go the puck line before I ever went the puck line with the Anaheim Ducks. So the team total. For the Anaheim Ducks, under the two and a half, it's juicy at minus 140 to minus 145, depending on your book. FanDuel has it at minus 145 right now. Um, I just don't trust the Ducks to be able to score on Flurry. Flurry's faced him 27 times in his career, and he's gone 22 and 5. So he has stood on his head versus the Ducks. He's got a 1.89 goals against average versus them and a 931 save percentage. So I expect the best out of him. Could he get a shutout when he absolutely could versus the Ducks here? So I believe in Flurry. Dostal has a 3.62 goals against average and an 898 save percentage. He's only played three games versus um, the Wild. He's gone 1-1-0 one, one, and zero with a 2.62 goals against average and a 934 save percentage. So he has played solid versus them. His save shot on goal prop is interesting at 29 and a half at minus 114 to the over because I do think the Wild get the shots on him and I could see him going over this number. We know the Anaheim Ducks allow an average of 33 shots on net per game and the Minnesota Wild average 30.1. They've got a power play that clicks at 21.9%. I do think those shots are coming and especially with how the Wild um, can come out strong offensively. I expect Dostal to be able to go over his number, but the Wild to still win. So I'm not going to play on Flurry's number. I just like Flurry to have a big one. I think I'm going to sprinkle on the shutout win though for Marc-Andre Flurry. Yeah, Kaprizov has been on absolute fire. So I would look at Kaprizov for the anytime goal as well. You guys, we've got almost 500 people watching live right now. So thank you so much. 476, everyone, for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. Two more games to go over, and then I will be on Game Time Decisions at 6.40 p.m. Eastern. So make sure you join me over there. We've got the Vegas Golden Knights taking on Calgary and Washington versus Seattle left. So. Let's look at the Vegas Golden Knights. They are rolling in here on the road at minus 176. The Calgary Flames at plus 146. Total of six and a half. Minus 120 to the over six and a half and minus 102 to the under. Now, when we look at the puck line here for Vegas, because, well, obviously they're too juicy on the money line. Laying the one and a half is plus 134. Calgary plus one and a half is minus 162. So not bettable in that one. Now, Jacob Markstrom is out with that lower body injury. Dan Vladar got the last start. So Wolf, uh, Dustin Wolf, I like to call him Wolfie, has been confirmed in net for the Calgary Flames. He's got a 3.70 goals against average and an 8.80 save percentage. Now he's been hung out to dry in some of these games and I really feel for him. Young, young goalie out here on the ice. And it's it's a hard spot to feel, especially with 
we know what Ryan Husk has done with this team, all the players that have been traded off. Noah Hanovan, one of them, who's making his return tonight, but Chris Tanev as well. And then they've added all of these defensive players that haven't been used to playing with each other. So Dustin will is going to get the shots on him tonight. Calgary's allowing on the season an average of 30.2. I expect at least 40 shots on Dustin Wolf tonight by the Vegas Golden Knights. The Vegas Golden Knights averaging 31.1. But like I said, the defense and the chemistry just isn't there for Calgary yet. Calgary's only chance of keeping up in this game is for their forwards to be able to score. I think Nazem Kadri has to come out and lead this team. Uh, Sharonovich also has to come out with a big game. So can Calgary do it is the biggest question. Absolutely, because Vegas isn't looking as strong as they should. Now they are off that win versus the Seattle Kraken. And I don't know if you guys watched that one in overtime. That was a heartbreaking loss for the Seattle Kraken because they had the lead with 53 or 54 seconds left. Vegas brought it within one goal. 16, 16 seconds and change left on the clock. It was under 17 seconds. Vegas tied it up, pushed it to overtime, and then Vegas won in overtime. It was absolutely heartbreaking to watch. With your money on Seattle and for Seattle and their fans and their players, they were destroyed out there. But because Vegas got back in that game and their inability in the first period, they just had a rough first period. I think Calgary has every opportunity of coming out strong and keeping up with the goals in this one, I'm going to take the over six and a half in this. I do think this is a 4-3 style game and has the possibility of going to overtime. Calgary sitting sixth in the Pacific, fourth in the Pacific here for Vegas. Calgary absolutely wants to get this upset win. And I know Calgary is on the outside. That is 100% a given. This team, though, never gives up. You look at Nazem Kadri and his statements to the press. He's talking about how it's not the lack of effort that we're not getting the win. It is we need the chemistry. We need to uh, make those right calls. It's the lack of judgment, I believe he said. What was his exact words? It was the bad um, reads and the lack of judgment. So he knows that once this team starts firing together and gets that chemistry, they have every ability. You look at what happened with them versus the Tampa Bay Lightning, and I know the Tampa Bay Lightning had just a terrible game in that one, but I do think Calgary has every ability. Now they have lost their last three since trading off Noah Hanovan. So with Noah Hanovan coming back, and I don't think he's going to get a warm welcome, you guys. This is something that was kind of hush, hush. No one really talked about. Noah Hanovan got traded. He was offered an eight-year deal by Calgary, and he didn't stay. Now, he's all over the press today making these statements. I don't know if it was today or yesterday, saying how he loved the time with Calgary. He loves the fans. And Calgary, oh, you know, I wanted to get out my little violin for him because he knows he's getting booed tonight. It's just, yeah, I'm I'm frustrated with Hanovan. I think in this one, yeah, Kev, you can look at team total for Vegas over three and a half all day long. They will play hard for Hanovan. I think Calgary steps up. I think Calgary has ever opportunity for three game. Give me the over six and a half. Give me a chance at OT at plus 360. Sharon Kovic here for Calgary for the anytime goal at plus 210. He's been absolutely phenomenal. Nazem Kadri at plus 210 as well. I think Noah Hanovan scores on Wolfie, scores on his own team just to put a dagger in the backs of his old team and Calgary here. You get it at plus 550, you guys. You know you could see that storyline playing out. Jack Eichel for the Vegas Golden Knights for the anytime goal at plus 145 as well. Now, Vegas won in December in overtime 5-4. to four. And Calgary won in January 3-1. to one. And they also won the prior meeting in November two to one. I expect a higher scoring. We saw two of the games this season go under, one go over. I think this is an over all day long. Oh, Kuzmenko, something to look for. Kuzmenko is day to day. If he gets out there on the ice, I think he does have a solid game for Calgary. And then you're looking at Connor Zeri. He's still out. He's on IR. So hard one there. Otherwise I'd be taking him for the anytime goal. Okay. Last game, we've made it through again, uh, 6.40. Join me on game time decision. I almost said 4.40 because I'm mountain standard time. So it's that time for me. 
Washington Capitals taking on the Seattle Kraken. The Seattle Kraken minus 172. This team has to be just livid with how their last game went versus Vegas. I expect the fireworks right out of the gate for the Seattle Kraken, but I'm not laying minus 172 on the Kraken. Plus 142 here for the Washington Capitals. Total of five and a half. Minus 124 to the over. Plus 102 to the under. Now, if you like the Seattle Kraken puck line for big win, laying one and a half is plus 146. I'm going to do the puck line for the Seattle Kraken in the first period. You're laying a half a goal in the first period at plus 152. They have won their last eight first periods as a favorite following overtime. So they're coming off the overtime loss to Vegas in a game that they were so frustrated because they had that win in hand. They just had to last a minute. And then they just had to last 17 seconds and they couldn't do it. And Vegas was able to get the win. I think we get the best out of the Seattle Kraken to start this game. Now it looks like Charlie Lingren is expected here for the Washington Capitals and Joey Decord for the Seattle Kraken. I actually trust Joey Decord better than Grubauer. I know Grubauer has had some solid wins, but Joey Decord has been phenomenal. He's got a 2.46 goals against average on the season and a 919 save percentage. Now this is the second night of a back-to-back -back for the Washington Capitals. They lost that last game last night to the Oilers, 7-2. to two. It's a hard trip here for the Capitals. Not much else I can say. They're sitting three points behind the New York Islanders for that second uh, place uh, wildcard spot in the Eastern Conference. So they need, they need this win. They needed the win last night. They weren't able to get it. Can they get this win here? They also have the Canucks on Saturday and the Flames on Monday. I don't know. I don't know if they can get this win here, but one thing I do know is I do think the Seattle Kraken can get the win in the first period. Give me the first period puck line for them, and then I'm calling it a day. But you guys, that was everything. I appreciate each and every one of you for being here. Favorite game of the night. It's a hard one to say what the best game of the night is going to be. I think it will be um the florida panthers and the carolina hurricanes if you love those tight defensive battles and if you're looking for a game that will surprisingly be a little bit higher scoring than most people think i think it's the new york rangers and the tampa bay lightning i think there's fireworks in that game we've got some phenomenal games on the board i want to wish you guys all the best in all of your bets thank you so much for being here we've got over 500 people watching so much appreciation to each and every one of you if you can hit that like button hit that retweet button as well so more people can see the show i would thoroughly appreciate it but let's make some freaking money out there also drop below what you're betting so people can tell you on those bets the whole point of this show for us to make some freaking money. So let's make some money together. I appreciate you guys. First period cracking. Let's go. Okay. Bye, you guys.